Good morning, good morning. How's it going, Pete? It's going all right. Hanging in there. That's good, that's good. Where are you from, Pete? I'm from North Jersey, Bergen County, uh, Mawa, New Jersey, originally. I've uh, been out here in uh, Kensington for about two years. Two years in Kensington, huh? Yeah, it's a l little rough out here. Um, I've, I've been homeless. I panhandle for money. Um, and, and being out here, especially in the mornings, it can be kind of rough, you know? Right. How's Bergen County? Bergen County? Um, Bergen County's a, a little different. Um, I was out there in, in Patterson. They have their hoods and they have their, their issues and whatnot. Um, it's my family be out there, so you know it's different. When I'm you know closer to family, you can it's easier to get help and stuff. Um, being being in a different state, it could be difficult. You know, trying to trying to get your blessings, so to speak. Bergen County, that's North Jersey, right? Yes, it is. All right, a little upper scale from uh, out here. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's different, you know, in the neighborhoods, you don't see as much um, panhandling, you don't see uh, a lot of like open air drug markets, like there's, there's definitely drugs out there, but they're, they're more like hidden, so to speak, you know, pe pe people do it in the, in the backgrounds, you, know, you don't see them out in the streets, or you don't see so much, you know, uh, bad things happening, you know, walk, just walking around, walking out on the sidewalk, you know. Out here, you can see the homelessness, the you know the drug abuse, the violence. Out there, in Bergen County, it's a, it's different. You don't you don't see you don't see that when you you know walk around. Right, I believe so. Now I don't believe I got your age, sir. How old are you? I'm 35 years old. 35. Okay, okay. What brought you out here to Kensington? Um, I came out here to go into a recovery house. Um, I, I I did all right in the recovery house. I was there for about six months. Um, I had a job. I was saving up for a car at a couple hundred dollars in the bank, um, working every day, going to meetings, um, better contact with my son, and um, the life was taking a, a different path. I relapsed and I ended up out here in Kensington, and I've been stuck out here for about two years, trying to you know get myself together. Um, and you know things are different. And I'm working on getting my IDs again. Work I get every time I have a phone, it gets stolen. Um, it's, it it, it could be rough trying to get up from you know being out here. Now, Pete, what's your living arrangements? Um, right now, I've I've been staying um, on on sidewalks. Um, I usually get a piece of cardboard and uh, a blanket uh, if I can find a couch. Sometimes that's great. Um, I, I used to try and find mattresses, but you got to be careful. There's a lot of a lot of bugs out here, a lot of parasites that come across when uh, you get a lot of homeless people out here, and um, you got to watch out for stuff like that. So when I can, I try and get clean blankets and you know a piece of cardboard, and that's usually how I sleep at night. It could be really hard when it rains. Like when it, when it rains, uh, you you gotta have to have to find a piece of plastic now that, that could be any could be a garbage bag you know whatever you can get when you're homeless to cover yourself from the the rain and the elements will help yeah man it's tough man yeah i couldn't do it i couldn't do it no it's hard um there's programs out there to help like prevention point i've been trying to go there as much as possible um you have some outreach programs that help uh, it's really, really up to the individual to do. You know, I've, I've gotten some progress. I know they have uh, some suboxone clinics that I'm looking to get on now. And hopefully, you know, these programs will help me. I don't have any money, really. So to, to get my ID and be struggling with active addiction, it could be particularly hard to, you know, get, get your housing together and get all the things you need. So they're going to give me a case manager at Prevention Point, and hopefully that's going to help, you know, move things forward. How much sleep do you get a day? Depending. I mean, if it rains, I might not get no sleep. You know, there's time. There's definitely days where I stayed up, especially if I'm not prepared for the rain and it starts raining at night. There's really nowhere to go, so you have to. You can only really stand under an awning or, or stand somewhere, usually with other people around, and it's not too comfortable to sleep. Um, you know, I, I usually try to get on a, on a normal day between four and five hours of sleep if I can. What's your drug of choice? 
um, opiates. So uh, I, I got hooked on dope and um, started shooting it. And that's what you know keeps the leash on me. Um, you know, every couple of hours, you need to to dose, or you start getting sick. So it's it's really hard to get off of it, especially you know without the medicine. You need to get. I definitely. What's say, your habit like? My habit is like uh, how often a day? I, I, at least three times a day, if not more. I'd say a minimum at three dot three times a day. It's 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 like eating pretty much. You, how many bags? Um, I would say about ten bags a day. So to, to keep up with that habit, it you know takes whatever money I get, and it uh, consumes a lot of my time. You know, it's, it's just chasing the drug and chasing the drug and not now, working on other things. Are you only panhandling to get it, or are you? Yeah, right else? now I'm only panhandling. In the past, I've I've gotten incarcerated for uh, shoplifting and boosting and, and doing things like that. So I I used to steal for it, but uh, going to jail so many times kind of deterred me from that so I prefer to panhandle for it usually people will tell you to move and they won't um, arrest you or some of the other hustles out there you'll get arrested if you get caught what was your life like before the drugs before the drugs I mean it it, it wasn't too bad um, I came from a family to take care of me they you know I always had a roof over my head I always had I had food and whatnot um, I come from a broken home. My parents were together when I was uh, when I was little. Then, at my early teens, they got separated and divorced. And um, you know, my father moved out, and life became a little different. Um, I, didn't, I didn't have two parents working to help me. You know, instead they had their their own stuff going on with the divorce. And um, I I kind of you know started using the drugs around that time. And that, that's when, you know, I started isolating and I became more separated from my family who doesn't doesn't really know how to deal with the addiction because I've, I've stolen from my family before. And it's it's not easy for them to live with a person in active addiction. And I have to be understanding about that. I'm sorry to hear that, Pete. And I, I know the trauma is what kind of, you know, made you use somewhat. The trauma yeah. you went through. Yeah. Um, and like I said, a lot of it is, has been isolating for me. So when I isolate to, to deal with that, you got two parents that are fighting and they're, they're fighting over their own stuff. They might not have as much time to spend on, you know, caring for the child when you have two parents together that are working, you know, and are, are around, you know. Just having um, a, a father to come home every night to, you know, when they move out. Now you don't have a dad coming home, you know, from work. Two parents. You, do you have any kids you yourself? That. I have one one son. Yes, I do. Um, and with his mother, thank God, his mother doesn't have addiction issues, so I know he's well taken care of. Um, but yeah, there's there's been periods of time where where I was clean and I, I would I would see him a lot more. And you know, being out here in these streets, I, I wouldn't want my son to even see me like this. So it's. It's 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 hard. You know, that's probably the hardest thing on me. and My biggest motivation to try and fix things. When's the last time you've seen your son? Um, it's it's been about a year, about a year now since I've seen him. So um, uh, being being that I'm out here in PA and homeless, and he's in in Jersey, he's got a lot to do with it. Me being in a different state, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm hopefully I'll be able to see him soon. I got to go through the courts. You know, I pay child support. Um, I have physical, I mean, she has physical custody. I get visitation, so it's, you know, it's a, a little bit of a battle. And, you know, going through the court system, I have to wait a couple months to even see my son. So it's, 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 it's not easy, but... Um, the last time you seen your son, were you high? No, I wasn't. Um, I was clean. You was clean? I was clean back then. Um, I had supervised visitation. My mother would come with me. Um, we took him to church, took him out to eat, we put, you know, we took him to friendlies, we played in the park, and uh, it, was, it was a good time. And, you know, I'm happy that he could remember me like that and not have to see me like this, for sure. Do you want to get clean, Pete? Yeah, I do. I, I, I do. I definitely don't want to be out here forever. I've seen a different side of life. Um, I don't think this is it for me. <laughs> The, the high and, and fun of the drugs kind of wore off a, a long, long time ago. You know, now it's it's just kind of work, struggle, and, and pain that, that comes. What's stopping you? 
what's stopping me then. Um, it's probably probably myself in my, in my own head. Um, it, it's up to me. Like um, It's hard to do things on the weekends, but, I mean, come tomorrow, I should be in prevention point. And, um, you know, God willing, I'll, I'll be able to get my things together with my case manager and start getting my IDs. Not having an ID has pre prevented me from getting to work and um, unable to, to get that because, you know, these places want you to pay for your birth certificate and your social. Um, you have to get vouchers. Like that could be some pretty big barriers and hurdles to jump over when you're, you're homeless. Right, Pete. What advice would you give the youth that's somewhat following in your footsteps? What um, advice would you give them? Definitely don't, don't, don't pick up the first time. You know, I, I was taught in school a little bit about drugs, but I never really got to see it firsthand. As, and I, I know a lot of kids who, who kind of grew up in their struggle I might have had parents that dealt with it, got to see it and avoided it because of that, because they, they saw what it is and, see, and they could see for their, themselves the reality of what drugs bring and what they do. It's, it's not a fun high. It doesn't really make you feel good for a little bit. It's, it's homelessness. It's, you know, it's, it's being out here in the, in the trenches, not having any money, having dirty clothes, not being able to take care of yourself. It, it separates you from your family and ultimately, I think, from God, because I don't think God wants any of us to live like this. Where do you see yourself in six months? In six months, um, I see myself at least in a shelter, if not in a program. Um, I see myself on Suboxone and I see myself working towards um, the things I was working on when I originally came out here and was clean. I'd like to thank you for your time, Pete. Thank you. Been a great interviewee for me. My name's ATM Fox. I make these videos for educational purposes only. Man, wishing you the best, bro. Thank you. God bless. Join All Time Media's Patreon for exclusive content and behind the scenes content and face to face live video chat. Thank you, guys. The link is in the description below.